Hello everyone and welcome to KDH News. I'm Ricky Green with your top 10 stories of 2022. The year 2023 is on the horizon, but before it arrives, the Herald is taking a look back at some of the top stories of the year. In 2022, residents saw a deep battle over marijuana, a new name for the largest military installation, a severe drought, and increased crime, and more. Here's a look back at the top 10 stories from 2022. Coming in at number 10. In August, a unanimous decision was voted on, and Colleen City Council members adopted a new comprehensive plan for the city, a guide for the city's growth over at least the next decade. On August 16th, Verdenuity of Dallas CEO Kevin Shepard put the plan together. He told council members that adopting the plan wasn't enough, that it must be implemented if they want to avoid a budget crisis. Councilman Michael Boyd said the city's previous comprehensive plan adopted in 2010 more or less sat on the shelf. Boyd called the adoption of the new plan a significant day for the city of Colleen. The 2022 comprehensive plan calls for construction standards with a new focus on quality and appearance of residential and commercial buildings. In addition to the comprehensive plan on April 26, the City Council adopted the new architectural and design standards. At number nine, through October, the most recent month available, the City of Colleen has seen an increase in most crimes and a decrease in only one crime. The Colleen Police Department often releases updated crime statistics to provide residents with information. Crimes such as burglaries have shown the largest increase, according to the latest report. Overall, burglaries account for a 109.8% increase from 2021's year-to-date numbers through October. However, non-residential burglaries have increased by nearly 240%, with 506 burglaries occurring between January 1st and October 31st, compared to 149 in the same time frame a year ago. Motor vehicle thefts have also increased drastically from 2021, according to the report. As of October of this year, Colleen Police said that 539 vehicles had been stolen throughout the city, which is an increase of 104.2% from the 264 motor vehicle thefts reported through 2021. To view monthly reports from the Colleen Police Department, go to www.colleentexas.gov. Coming in at number eight. For various reasons, five high-ranking members of Colleen staff either resigned or have announced their retirement in 2022. Colleen City Attorney Tracy Briggs began her employment on December 1st, 1999. At the beginning of June, she resigned her position after accepting a position with Central Texas College in Colleen. A few weeks later, Executive Director of Finance Jonathan Locke and City Secretary Lucy Aldrich both announced their decisions to resign. Aldrich worked for the city for 19 years. Locke had been with the city for seven years at the time of his resignation. Not long after Aldrich and Locke announced their resignations, Executive Director of Recreation Joe Brown did the same. Brown had been with the city just over three years. Finally, in November, Colleen Chief of Police Charles Kimball informed City Manager Kent Cagle of his intent to retire. Kimball began his law enforcement career in 1991 and will retire in January. He's been with the city for over five years. At number seven, a Colleen woman made history on March 25th this year. Debbie Nash King was sworn in as the first black female mayor in the city's 140 year history. Nash King is the second woman to hold the city's highest elected office. Nash King succeeded former Mayor Jose Segarra, who was term limited after serving three consecutive terms as mayor. Segarra stepped down as mayor on March 17th weeks before the end of his term in order to run 
for an at-large city council seat, which he later won. The move paved the way for Nash King, who was mayor pro tem at the time. Nash King later won the mayoral seat in the May election. At number six, the opening of a new high school in Killeen expedited talks regarding expansion of a road in South Killeen. As Chaparral High School opened with popularity in August, Chaparral Road quickly emerged as a traffic jam. During the morning rush hour, cars and school buses could be seen waiting in slow moving lines. 10 Killeen police officers assisted with traffic control on Chaparral Road and Featherline Drive, which are two lanes near the Colleen Independent School District's newest school. In comments on social media on the first day of school, some Yoel Ranch residents were less enthusiastic about the school's opening as they complained on the Colleen Daily Herald and Colleen Police Department Facebook post about being unable to leave their neighborhood, or in some cases, their driveways, thanks to the additional traffic. Design and construction of improvements to Chaparral Road received Bell County support in September. The Bell County Commissioner's Court unanimously voted to approve an agreement between the county, Colleen, and Harker Heights regarding the road. The agreement will see the three entities fund the $24 million project. The project officials said would include about 6.64 miles of road between State Highway 195 to the west of FM 3481 to the east. A large portion of the project is expected to be covered by a grant from the Colleen Temple Metropolitan Planning Organization, which funds local road projects. Officials said that the organization is expected to pay about 80% of construction costs for the project, totaling about 17.2 million. This would account for about 72% of the project's total. Coming in at number five. In May, a couple of unfortunate incidents involving Bell County Water Control and Improvement District number one happened. Area residents experienced a disruption to their way of life in some Central Texas communities. It began May 7th with a chunk of a 48 inch pipe operated by WCID1 breaking forcing the loss of thousands of gallons of water. Not long after the pipe was repaired, a power outage at Belton Lake Water Treatment Facility prompted boil water notices that lasted for days. Coppers Cove, Fort Hood, Colleen, Harker Heights, and Nolanville issued boil water notices immediately following a three-hour power outage at Belton Lake Water Treatment Plant. Per Texas Commission on Environmental Quality Guidelines, a water supplier must issue a boil water notice after experiencing major loss in water pressure as with power outage. Number four, though conditions have slightly improved, Central Texas has been crippled by a severe drought all summer. At its peak, the drought dried the air so much that one airport did not register rain amounts for 42 days. During the drought, many area cities implemented drought contingency plans and asked residents to conserve water. The FME News Service reported last week that Bell County's drought conditions have remained stable for weeks, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor map. 2022 is poised to go down in history as one of Colleen's driest years. As of early last week, the Colleen area had reported 15.8 inches of rain for the entire year, less than half the rain Colleen typically receives in any given year. At number three, earlier this year, it took crews of area firefighters weeks to control a raging wildfire at Fort Hood. What began as a series of three wildfires burning out of control grew quickly developing into a blaze that scorched more than 33,000 acres of land in Coriel County side of Fort Hood. After burning for a couple of days, the fire jumped the boundary fence and began burning vegetation near the small town of Flat, just north of Fort Hood. The fire prompted a brief evacuation for residents of Flat, but they were allowed to return to their homes shortly afterwards. Fort Hood officials said the fire had reached 95% containment 
on April 1st, but it remained at 95% contained through at least April 12th. Number two, out with the old and in with the new. In about a year, Fort Hood will officially change its name to Fort Cavazos after Congress directed the Army to change the identity of military bases named after Confederate soldiers. The base will honor the legacy of General Richard Cavazos, the Army's first Hispanic four-star general who also commanded Fort Hood. Previously, Fort Hood was named after Confederate General John Bell Hood. After overriding President Donald Trump's veto of the National Defense Authorization Act in December 2022, Congress created a naming commission that was charged with making a name recommendation. On October 6, Defense Secretary Lloyd J. Austin agreed with the recommendation that federal officials have until January 1, 2024 to finalize the transition, but it has already begun. Fort Hood has begun the process of renaming buildings with hood in them to satisfy a congressional mandate to rename military buildings and installations originally named after members of the Confederacy. So far, Hood Stadium has been renamed to Phantom Warrior Stadium, and the former Club Hood is now the Lone Star Conference Center, according to the Post spokesman Montgomery Campbell. Every building with Fort Hood in its name will eventually be renamed, although the post has not yet received official guidance on how to proceed with the process. And coming in at number one, a movement to decriminalize possession of misdemeanor amounts of marijuana dominated Herald headlines throughout the year, and the battle appears to be far from over. As a result of the efforts of Ground Game Texas, a nonprofit organization, voters in both cities saw Proposition A on their ballots. It's the ordinance that decriminalizes possession of misdemeanor amounts of marijuana. In both cities, the answer was resoundly in favor of the new ordinance during the November 8th elections. In Harker Heights, city council members, except one, did not share the same view as the voters and have repealed the ordinance. The issue will be back on the ballot in May after residents signed a petition for a referendum. Colleen City Council members, on the other hand, adopted the ordinance with some revisions. The county attorney and district attorney did not like that. However, and received authorization from the Bell County Commissioner's Court to file a lawsuit against Colleen. And that's the end of our 2022 top 10 stories for the Colleen Daily Herald. Stay tuned for more of 2022 honorable mention top stories of the year. The Heights Knights football team won 12 games in 2022, the most in school history. The team took nine regular season wins into the playoffs and rolled throughout the first three rounds. But the Magic ran out on December 2nd in the regional finals with a 60-24 loss to DeSoto, the same team that knocked the Knights out in 2021. Along the way, the Knights picked up quite a bit of hardware, including an outright District 12 6A title, three by district playoff trophies, and several regional semifinal victories. In September came the only loss during the regular season for the Knights, in a 28-27 loss against Odessa Permian. Harker Heights is the first Colleen IS Day school to make it to the regional finals of the playoffs since the Colleen Kangaroos did it in 2008. The Marvin Guy case had many developments throughout the year. The major development is that the trial date has finally been set for May 8, 2023. Guy has been in prison for eight years after being accused of shooting and killing a Colleen police officer during a no-knock raid in 2014 in which Guy claims self-defense. Also in September, the state filed a motion to waive the death penalty in this case. If convicted of capital murder, Guy would be sentenced to life in prison. Finally, 
On November 10th, Judge John Gunt refused to reduce a $4 million bond set in Guy's case. Next on our list, a South Korean company chose Killeen as the location of its first U.S. plant. Dong Jin Sim Kim is an industry leader in the electronic materials market. The company's major product lines include display materials, semiconductor materials, and renewable energy materials, according to the company. Prior to venturing into the U.S., the company has operated 20 plants in Korea, China, and Europe, and has employed over 1,800 people. The company will provide patented processing chemicals for the 18 billion Samsung manufacturing facility in Taylor. Dong Jin plans to build a 91,000 square foot plant at the Killeen Business Park, its first such facility in the United States. Production at the plant is scheduled to begin in 2024, according to the release. Next on our honorable mention list of 2022, after the retirement of longtime president and CEO of Greater Colleen Chamber of Commerce, John Crutchfield was succeeded by Scott Connell. On September 1st, Connell took over as the head of the chamber and the city's economic development corporation. Connell has over 36 years of economic development and Chamber of Commerce experience. He most recently served as vice president at the Temple Economic Development Corporation. On March 27th, a United Petroleum Transport tanker rolled over, spilling around 2,000 gallons of fuel onto Central Texas Expressway, causing a two-week cleanup of the spilled fuel. According to police, the fuel tanker was traveling west on Central Texas Expressway and took the turnaround under Interstate 14. The driver began to travel east in the 5700 block of East Central Texas Expressway when an unknown vehicle entered the lane in front of the truck. The driver of the truck applied the brakes in an attempt to avoid a collision, causing the tanker to flip over on its passenger side. Next on our list, in September, Coriel County law enforcement officials lost a prisoner in a rural part of the county. Brandon Hogan, a Coriel County jail inmate, escaped a work detail September 26 by climbing over a fence at Seton Cemetery in Leon Junction, which is north of Fort Hood, approximately 27 miles northwest of Temple and approximately 15 miles southeast of Gatesville. In October, Hogan was placed on the state's top 10 most wanted list with up to $7,500 offered in reward money for tips that lead to his capture. Hogan is still at large as of December 31st. He's described by officials as a 37-year-old white male, 5 feet 10 inches tall, 170 pounds, and balding with light brown blonde hair and brown eyes. According to the Coriel County Jail website, Hogan was arrested August 1st on four charges including assault, theft of a firearm, burglary, and criminal mischief. Next on our honorable mention list, Bell County and the city of Colleen entered an agreement in the summer to construct a new county annex building in downtown Colleen to make way for the new building. The city had the former headquarters of First National Bank Central Texas at 507 North Gray Street demolished, which began in November and was completed in December. A lot happened in the Vanessa Guillen case. The first new development happened on December 29, 2021, when President Joe Biden signed the National Defense Authorization Act which included the I Am Vanessa Guillen bill that Congress passed. The law, which went into effect January 1st, does many things, including stripping commanders of their involvement in sexual harassment or sexual assault investigations. On August 12th, Guillen's family filed a $35 million lawsuit against the Army, alleging that she was raped and tried to commit suicide. The lawsuit is broken down as $10 million for a wrongful death suit and $25 million for a personal injury claim. 
on November 29th, Cecily Aguilar, the woman accused of assisting in disposing of Guillen's body, pleaded guilty to making a false statement and being an accessory after this fact. She is expected to be sentenced this year. That concludes our honorable mention 2022 top stories for KDH News. We wish you a happy and prosperous new year. I'm Ricky Green.